thing to construct that. Why does it matter and why you gotta bring up race and all that? It's, it's actually a great thing. Um, a great thing that, since, since we don't have a lot of time, I have to be specific, can be used in the literature to infiltrate, infiltrate expand, enhance, dream, skin, grow. Um, the current literary toolbox enclosed prejudice set of technical devices that we often inherit while we're journeying on our way from the dead and the church and the music and the streets or wherever you come from to the classroom and everything that happens after that. So race becomes in a lot of ways. If one includes the body, if one includes behavior, if one includes everything that possible you come in contact with and you catalog and collect, race becomes a wonderful and marvelous and often shedding reaching into playground for the possibilities of the future of the handbook that so frustrates us when we are given formal assignments and things like that. So I think my aesthetic practice uh, is always trapped there. It's always naturally tanned there. So a few things. When I was working on my first book of poems, I'm Thomas Sayers Ellis, and I grew up in Washington, D.C. And I grew up as actually, and this is going to matter later, a skinny kid who was made to take Taekwondo and also given drumsticks. So I was sort of like a percussive kicker. <laughs> <laughs> and because my dad was a boxer and a race car driver, he was not going to have a skinny son who was one to write poems. So um, but I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to be Gail Sayers. <laughs> That's the Sayers. I became Sayers. And the great thing about Sayers, at an early age, I just couldn't make categories. Everything just seemed to go together. Just the way he ran, darting, stopping, going, set a step, cross over, all that on the field. And the moment, this will come back later, when I decided that prosody, right, the prose and the song of it, had so much to do with movement, motion in the line, right? The verse moving, the verse tricking, the verse stopping, the verse being interrupted, the verse stuttering, the verse, once it has the singer and all that funkadelic, why he always sort of sings half a note of the word before the actual word. He says, I'm going for the note. And I remember going from the playground when he had to be tough. Paul, sorry, Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School when you wanted to make the big guys think you could fight them, you would have did that. You didn't want the foreshadow woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it was physical, and physical matters in the work. So when I speak of top one, one right now, we would all be sleeping since 1970, two, three, four, five. Um, it matters in the work, because the line is physical. William Stafford, dead poet, right? Great poet. Great. This is his essays. That um, a poem is like a joke that is learning jujitsu. <laughs> and then he said, a line is a breathing walk. So the rebreathing run and race, the breathing walk, and the way you walk, the way you move across something, isn't always linear. It oftentimes has to be interrupted by something, a historical moment, an accident, an evil, a passion. And that's right. So when I sent my manuscript out, my first manuscript, I got a look back from one of the big private literary presses who had asked for the book. And the note said, it was a rejection, and the note said, that's necessary. The note said, um, I, we like so many of these poems, no, we like a few of these poems, and just the poem. And we wish there were so many more of them of the poet hurt in the world. Which is fine, and we, we know that there's a style of her. We know that W.H. Auden writes about who? William of Yeats, right? In memory of Yeats, he says, Mad Ireland hurt Yeats in his poetry, right? So it got me to thinking, and that's a famous line, right? And Auden, Auden put down a few of them. I mean, Auden's considered the whole poet of the modern age, right? And um, he said, so I got to think about 
well, am I a hurt poet in the world? I started to get involved with the writers I knew and I started playfully categorizing. So there's a hurt poets on the opposite. And I pretty much decided that I might be, or might have been at that moment, in the middle, moving towards one of the poets perhaps who does some hurting, given the history. What did Walcott say in his inaugural, but he was a Nobel Prize. We must love history despite history. So I was thinking that if I must love history despite history, I might be the one whose percussive running race toolbox was offensive occasionally instead of defensive. Now that's a problem. But then you're the one in the room. They come down this. They used to say about Malcolm X, I'm not comparing myself. <laughs> when I meet more people, the older people who move out, they say, we used to see him come down the street and hide. <laughs> he was going to expose something about you or say something or introduce that topic. That, oh, you don't want to talk about that, bro. I'm just trying to get a pair of shoes. <laughs> I was going to let you know what the shoe was connected to, where that came from, and who was working on and why you were a part of that if you wore that shoe. <laughs> now, I don't want to be that person in literature, but. <laughs> the drum. Outlawed. And so, to be the one that perhaps has to occasionally be percussive and hurt it, it is a bit of a problem. So, I think once that was accepted, once a certain kind of line that ran a certain kind of way, I don't want to call it lyric, toward. Right, a certain kind of banging, and yet yeah, young people call it flow. So when I began the poem, the poem, the poem in the packet, and I would begin with a physical gesture for that poem. 